Try, 2004, by Phil Price. Standing above the water's edge, at the furthest point out along Pier 89, in the right-hand corner, Try has a slender, stem-like support that holds the moving, kite-like elements high to catch the wind. We are standing at the end of Pier 89, one of the five huge finger wharves that jut out into the harbour at Walsh Bay, just west of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Across the harbour, we can see Luna Park, the yachts of Lavender Bay, and the office towers of North Sydney. Then, further west, bushy headlands, and Goat Island not too far away, and houses crowding the shore at Roselle and Balmain. We are standing on a nine metre wide concrete apron which wraps around the building for the full length of the wharf. Along the edge of the apron, a barrier of chunky 40 centimetre square wooden timbers lie end to end, each around four metres long and weathered to a silvery grey, stopping cars falling several metres to the water below. Every few timbers, there's a gap filled by an old heavy metal bollard for tying ships to the wharf, smooth and flat on top, like a giant chunky heart-shaped stool with a single thick leg. Phil Price's 2004 sculpture Try, four metres high, seems small and delicate, placed as it is on the tip of this wharf of vast proportions. Phil Price is a New Zealand sculptor, most well known for his large-scale, wind-activated kinetic works. Try has a slender, stem-like support that holds the moving, kite-like elements high to catch the wind. The sculpture is painted the palest silvery grey blue, with a slightly metallic sheen to it, but for the work to move with the wind, it must be lighter than it looks and most of Price's works are made of a combination of steel and composite plastic. The base of the stem is triangular with 45 centimetre sides and is bolted in place just inside the corner of the two huge wooden timbers at the wharf's northeastern tip. The stem rises for two metres in a gentle arc almost out over the water, tapering up to a rounded tip about 10 centimetres in diameter. The name of the sculpture, Tri, T-R-I, comes from the three triangular moving parts attached to the tip of the stem, one on top of the other. These triangular plates are a couple of centimetres thick and very slightly in size at around two hand spans, with the largest at the bottom and the smallest at the top. Each kite-like triangle has a stubby tail the shape of an axe handle, which arcs up almost perpendicular to the plate face. The articulated bearings that join each element to the one below, and the bottom one to the stem, allow the elements to move in careful balance, with the stubby tails acting as counterweights. As the wind blows, the formation pivots and different shapes form as one triangular element dips one way carrying the others with it, then hesitates before falling back and around, the work coming to rest as the wind dies down.